Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents have built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go! Yeah. Hey, hey, ladies and gentlemen, guys and gals, welcome to Super Agents Live. If you're new to the show, hey, thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And for everybody, I appreciate all of you taking the time out of your day, right? I know you're out there prospecting. You're you know going to listing presentations. You're doing deals. Uh, but look, you're, you're tuning in. Get your dose of Super Agents Live. So I appreciate it. Today, we're doing something a little bit different. You know, look, it is fascinating to me. Um, By far, by far, the majority of agents are women. But there is a very strange thing that happens. Even though the majority of, of agents are women, most of the people who are putting big numbers on the board are men. So, you know, look, if, if I go through my, uh, you know, my guest list, I have a lot of men and I, you know, and, and I really, really, you know, I, for women out there listening, you know, they want to hear from a woman, right? That perspective, that point of view. And I really do try to, to, uh, to get women on the show just as much as men. Today, we are going to have a woman on the show, Allison Van Wig. And now, uh, Allison, um, what we're going to talk, look, here's what we're going to talk about today. So she is a crazy farmer. So we're going to talk about farming. We're going to talk about niche or niche marketing. Uh, we are going to, uh, uh, we start off the show with talking about the Keller Williams model. If you didn't know, Keller Williams has a, and I didn't know this until recently. And a lot of people that I talked to, I asked them about if they knew about this model and a lot of people didn't. So we uncover that a little bit. We talk about web leads and versus farm leads, all that kind of stuff. So I hope you love the content. Uh, let me know what you think. Really quick, so for housekeeping, number one, we have a hashtag for this show. It is unpack that idea. Go ahead and send out a tweet using that hashtag. I'll follow you, and I encourage everybody in the audience. And look, we have a really strong tribe. A really, I can think of names right now. I can wake up in the morning, and you know, I I know from our tribe who is already out there tweeting about the show. So, uh, you know, join our community, join our tribe, get out there, uh, and look, you'll get followers. Um, so one thing that the last couple of weeks I've been talking about, I you know, I was a little bit impulsive about three weeks ago, and I said, hey, listen, we're going to do this live event June nineteenth. Uh, man, you know, I didn't run it the date by my wife. So uh, the kids are just getting out of school and uh, we actually have a trip planned. So I didn't plan the trip. My wife did. So um, so here's and I looked at my calendar. And so we are going to we're going to have that live event. But I think um, the, what, when we are going to have it, it's going to be uh, the probably the third week of July. So it gives more people t- a time to uh, to prepare and sort of put it in their sc- calendar. Um, I'm going to early in July. I'm going to an event in Portland, Oregon, called the World Domination Summit. So it's all sold out, but uh, I would have encouraged you to go. And look, if anybody's going, send me an email. Let's for sure hook up. Um, so and then and then I have a different. A, a, I'm going to a, a a mastermind, a small mastermind with some super big wigs, uh, August sixth. So I figure you know we'll do it third week of July. All right. So if you're interested in going and look, it's going to be 150 bucks. We're going to limit it to 10 people, and we're going to rent out a suite and mastermind all day. That's the deal. It's not some big event. It's not an expensive event. It's it's 150 bucks all day mastermind. Uh, real quick. Um, if you haven't gone to my website and downloaded my ebook, I wrote, uh, a little, you know, I think it's eight or 13 pages, a little ebook. It's a, it's pretty good. You know, um, go download it because I'm going to be retiring that. I just wrote a brand new one that is really good. I'm really, really proud of it. Uh, um, so I'm going to be taking the old one off the shelf or off the, uh, my autoresponder and uploading my new one. And by the way, I'm having a devil. Of, I'm not a technical guy. So if anybody out there in the audience is technical and they know how to use Aweber and, and WordPress and you're able to, you know, take my old book off, put my new one up, I would, I'd appreciate the help, man. And, uh, and look, if you do that for me, I'll give you, I'll give you 30 minutes. Let's dig into your business. Okay. That's it. Let's hear from our sponsor and then get to the show. 
We all know the best kind of referral is one from our sphere or farm. But how do we stay top of mind? Now, most people, they take a three-pronged approach, right? They door knock in their farm, they call people, and they mail them. Most people fall down by not getting to their people, their sphere, their farm. They don't get them engaging content. And look, you know, sure, we can list them a postcard or we can send them an article that we think is going to be of interest to them. Our new sponsor, Discover Publications, takes that one step further. For just slightly more than the cost of a stamp, Discover Publications creates a completely customized newspaper. Now, they'll go out and they'll curate content or you can create your own. All of my sponsors are white labeled. Now, I called prior to having them on the show. I called some of Discover Publications clients and I talked to this one guy and he does some interesting things. He'll go out and interview restaurants that are in his farm, in his sphere. He creates a write-up. He, interestingly enough, resells advertising in his own newspaper to his trusted network, whether that's the plumber or the insurance agent. And by the way, this guy has 60% market penetration. He told me the paper has cemented those numbers. If you're interested, go check out discoverpubs.com. Let me know what you think. I am super excited for today's guest. We have the Long Beach legend, Allison Van Wig. Hey, Allison, thanks for taking the time out today. You are welcome. I'm excited to have this opportunity. Yeah, yeah and well, look, and, and, and I, I blew it last week. I had you scheduled, and uh, I had another call that went long, and uh, so we missed you last week. I'm glad you rebooked and came on the show. So listen, Allison, tell us a little bit about yourself. I know you've been in the game for a long time, but tell us a little bit about yourself and, and your business today. And we're going to get into, I know you kind of your specialty is niche marketing, so we'll get into that a little bit later, but just give us a you know 30,000 foot overview. 25 years in the business. I've been with Keller Williams probably for the last eight or nine years. Came from Century 21, and they're kind of, you know, not in our area as much anymore. KW was the right move for me because they're all over the place. Um, I am a broker. A lot of people say, well, why are you with a big company when you could just have your own company? I like having a big name and a big company. I think people really value that, especially when they're looking for a listing agent. And I do a lot of farming in the area, so I want people to know who I am. Okay. Um, uh, ben Ward, I just worked Long Beach and Lakewood for those 25 years. I don't like to go out of my area. I'll go 15 minutes away, but that's about it. Interesting. So, I, you know, I, I didn't know that you were with Keller Williams. <clears throat> I just found out there's a, uh, Aaron Kaufman. Do you know that name? Yes. So I recently had a conversation with Aaron, and <clears throat> he's sort of a recruiter for KW. Uh, you guys have a very unique model, and I was unaware of the model, uh, and I ran that model by some other people, and they were unaware of it. Um, can, can you explain the KW model? As far as like when you're bringing people into the company, well, the, look, or the, the, here's it, what, it's a whole different aspect than most companies. Yeah. You know, basically, if you bring an agent into the company, then they are put under you. So as long as you're a successful producing agent and they produce, you get what they call profit sharing from them. Right. But what's even more important is KW's culture. We have a group, what we call the ALC, and usually there's 8 to 12 agents, and then they form groups like an educational committee, a tech committee, and we have classes for all the other agents. So we're basically deciding what's missing for the beginning agent, what's missing for the middle of the road agent, and then making complete calendars every month to try to have a great training schedule. It's a little bit different. It's not... You know, when you're in true KW culture, the idea is that you try to help your fellow agent get ahead. Yeah, and I'll tell you, what is missing uh, for all those agents is my show. And I've talked to Diane Kukuska, and uh, and she would not she she would not come on the show. Um, but that's a different story. But so here's what Aaron told me that um uh so you, so you sign up to be a kw agent just and you have to be a successful person just like you said but when you you know you put those people underneath you and as long as they people perform you continue to get a sh that profit share so aaron his whole model is he doesn't sell real estate he's out there being a recruiter he brings people in and and uh he's going to get a profit share from those people for ever 
Right. Even when you leave the company, once right. you've been with the company for three years, you have that locked in, and you will always get that from those other people that are producing. That's amazing. Um, uh, so is there, uh, what are those numbers? So you say, you know, if you're successful, then you bring somebody in, and if they're successful, what what does that mean? What is successful? What, what's, what are the, the, the hurdles? Some the- agents... I think like there's some agents in our company currently that are making like 16,000 a year just on the profit sharing part. Right. Which I mean, that pays for your advertising. That's great. Yeah. But, um, you know, if you don't try, like I don't particularly try too hard (laughs) with that. I, I didn't really understand it that well. Yeah. And then, um, I switched KW offices and the other office had a whole new understanding of it, which helped me understand better. And it's like my main focus is real estate, but it's like, you bet I'm going to bring people in the company, not just because I get that profit sharing, but if you truly care about people, you should want them to have the best training possible. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, and is there, and I, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but is there, somebody also told me that there was another thing where you come in under KW and you pay them like 20 grand or 30 grand and then there are no splits. You get, even if you're, you're not a broker, you get all your commission. Correct. They have a, they have what they call like each office center has a different cap depending on what the expenses are. Like New York would be different than Kansas city. Got it. You know, because the expenses in New York. So their cap might be closer to 28. Kansas city might be 22. So once you pay that in your E and O insurance, you are done for the year. Interesting. So then it's all 100% yours. Do you think that is what was the magic behind the, the, the KW brand, you know, that Gary Keller went out and, and yeah, built? Because it's the only real estate company I've been telling people for years, run your business like a business. And agents have this concept that they think that they work for the broker. Okay, we don't work for the broker. It's like that broker does not tell you what to do. They train you and they hope you do it, but no one can force you to do it. Right. You are your own business. And the quicker you act and learn it, the faster you're going to succeed. That's when I mentor people, my main focus is on setting up your own business. And even agents that have been in the business seven, eight years, I will have resistance to that. And it's like, those are the people that are less likely to succeed because the faster you realize this is a business, the more you're going to succeed. Yeah, no, I, like, yeah, I totally agree with that. But with, Allison, tell me what that looks like. So, so set up your business like a business. And, and, and I, you know, I'm forever on this show saying that, you know, real estate agents are real estate. They're entrepreneurs, just their product or service just happens to be real estate. And I, you know, and, and it's amazing that people that are out there doing it don't see it like that. Right. They treat it like, Oh, I'll do this on the side or let me just see, let me have these buyers and get this check. And then, and it's like the minute they get that check, it's spent for living expenses instead of what am I going to buy for my business to make my business grow? There's no business plan. It's like real estate is one of the cheapest businesses you can get into and be successful, but you've got to have a plan. And it's like, once you buy your business cards, your signs, what, you know, it's like that business plan should be, detailed as to, okay, I'm going to buy business cards now. This is what they're going to look like. Make your logo from the very beginning so you are branded all the way through. So when people see Allison, it's like, oh, there's a postcard from Allison. It's got the sunflower on it. Right. Allison does liquid. Allison is this. It's like, never do I use the office phone number on anything because I do not want my customers calling the office and then saying, that customer might say, oh, I'd like to list my home. Okay, we'll get an agent for you. Right. Well, they're looking at Allison's postcard. They're thinking they're getting Allison, but you called the office with 200 people. Don't ever use that office number on anything. And it's like, how about a website? I have agents out there. They have no web presence at all. And the internet is huge. All of my business (laughs) comes from referral, farming, and internet. And it's like the faster you learn that you have to get that set up, the better you're going to succeed. Because when I go in and do that listing presentation and I tell, show that client what I can do for them, 
you better be able to offer the same thing. Otherwise, you're wasting your time doing the mailings because I'll get that listing. Right, right. So, so let's just let's just back up for a second and just I, I just want to condense everything you said. So, and I think it's beautiful you said that. So, number one, it's your personal brand in front of the corporate brand. And that your own personal brand, everything about that. So use your own uh, phone number. Never don't use a uh, Allison Van Wig at Keller Williams. Use the Allison at AllisonVanWig dot com. Right. right. So Mine is Allison at Superbroker dot com. My website is Superbroker dot com. Allison at Superbroker. It's with KW. And it you know it's like everything is about Allison. Because I am running my own business. Right, right, right. And, that's- and so, if you ever left, if you ever left, your your clients would not really see this big, you know, transition. It's like Allison is Allison, regardless of the broker KW she works for. Correct. Okay, I love it. Correct. So, and the other thing, just 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 attack on that, right? Running your business, uh, running your real estate business like a business, is you know, I I always tell people, you know, look, you know. Find the don't be a sole prop. Go out and be an LLC or an S corp, or you know, get an actual structure. Number one, number two, have multiple bank accounts. Have an have your personal uh, where you pay your rent from, but then have a marketing bank account. Have a you know a, 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 a just an operating bank account. Right. I have you know my business is separate from my regular account, and it's like. <clears throat> You know, I know how much, because in my business plan, it says how much I spend on advertising every month. Right. How much do I spend on office supplies? And it doesn't change. It's usually, when you figure your advertising, it's about it's going to be about 30% to generate the income you need. It's going to be 30%. So if I wanted to make 100 grand, I'm going to have to spend 30 grand in marketing? Yes. Interesting. Postcards internet, any kind of advertising form that you want to do. That includes maybe also your postage to deliver those cards. Right. Um, so, and, and obviously you can, you can lessen that, that, uh, you know, you can uh, farming. So your three channels, right? So you have a farm, uh, you have referrals from your sphere and past clients, basically your list. Uh, and then you have web leads. Let's 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 talk about those a little bit um, because with farming, right? That that doesn't cost anything. It's your time, right? If you're out there knocking on doors, uh, you know, you're you're knocking on doors is great, but a lot of times, like in my area, it's Southern California. Homes are around four to five hundred. It's mostly two working people, so mm. a lot of people aren't home during the day. Got it. So. You know, a lot of the classes across the nation are like, oh, you need to call in the morning. You need to knock on those doors. My knuckles are going to bleed because no one's home. But I can hit them on a Saturday afternoon. I can hit them, especially April, May, June, July, 5 to 7 in the evening. Right. Great time to knock on doors. But it's also a great time to call. So usually Tuesdays and Thursday evenings, I'll set that aside to do calls. And then I'll do some calls in the afternoon. But the majority of my people, because it's two working income, they're going to be home in the later hours of the day. And I also do postcards for farming, postcards and newsletters. So you have newsletters, you have postcards, you're, you're doing inbounds into your farm and you're not really knocking on doors. So how, tell me how you got those. Uh, you know, one thing with, I have some coaching clients and we're always, we have one method to get the numbers in the farm. How did you get the numbers to the houses in your farm? How did I get the numbers in my farm? Yeah, for you to, 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 like to call turnover them. rate? No, 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 no. Oh, you, the phone numbers. The phone numbers. I, oh, right. I use a system called Mojo. Got it. And then I can download those numbers into there. So I can call through Mojo if I want to do a general calling. Okay. Um, I also do contests in my farm. When I do those postcards, I have like November is win a turkey. Hmm. So people will sign up to have a turkey. Now, turkeys are pretty cheap. I don't give the actual turkey away. I'll give a um, gift certificate for $25 to like the local market. And... People love that. So out of maybe 6,000 postcards, I might get 100 people that sign up to win a turkey. But every year, you get different people. So then over the years, you start getting their, to 
the entry form has to be filled out completely. So you're asking for their email, phone number, address, name. So you get all that information for your records. Right. I have win a pie. I try to do cheaper contests so that you can give more away so that people are excited when they see the winner. So if they go to win a turkey, which is currently down right now because it's not November, they'll see the website. They apply right online. And then they get to see a video when I do the drawing of the people winning turkeys. Got it. So it's right online for a couple weeks after that. It's the same thing with win a pie. Sometimes I do win a grill in summer, um, liquid valentine, and liquid movie night. So I do different contests all the time. I have liquid tomato, too. So sometimes that's a tomato plant. Huh. So I kind of mix it up and keep yeah. it interesting all year long. And over the years. So one year we might give a tomato plant, but we won't give another one out for three years. Why? But, you know, we I mean, a tomato plant's like under 10 bucks. So why wouldn't you do that all the time? Because we like to keep it mixed up. Oh, I got it. You so want to keep fresh. Year, right. The next year we're going to do the pies for Mother's Day. So, if you have too many contests, one, it's too much to always be sitting up that website all the time. But once you've got it designed, then you just redirect like you can take win a turkey and redirect it to, some, to your website and so, just say hey the contest is down right now right okay so i look i love the right. idea of contest i mean I, that's you're the first person on the show that has brought that up so i i love that idea why don't you why don't you spend 290 to 300 bucks and say win an ipad mini don't you think the engagement would be much higher than when i mean look i'm not going to give you my information for no, tomato plant. because it well it depends on your it depends on your farm if you were working townhomes and your your owners of those townhomes are under 40 the ipad is going to go great okay but one of the most successful things i had was win a grill okay who doesn't want a barbecue grill right and you get a two to three hundred dollar gift certificate to win a barbecue okay yeah that appeals to everybody because most of my owners in my farm are 40 to 80 years old okay i got it okay so, so, so we're, we're and and the thing is one big thing a year a couple of little things because to see the win a pie everybody that enters is winning a pie they're five dollars at marie calendar right. you can buy them ahead of time right you get a hundred entries it's going to cost you five hundred dollars but everybody's happy because they got a pie, and they won. They're you gonna know what? Remember they remember you, right? It doesn't. It, but it, the the it's the winning aspect. Like I, hey, I won. Like everybody wants to win something, even if it's nothing. Um, yeah, I right. love that idea. That's a great idea. Okay, so that's what you're doing in your farm, and then obviously you have referrals. What is the mix? So we have farm, we have referrals, uh, and we have web and leads. internet. Yeah, right. What do you, in terms of your business? What can you? What are the percentages? 60% of the business comes from the farm. And okay. don't, you know, so many, um, so many agents fail to realize how much business actually comes from your farm. See, because you can get a listing and then you get a drive by call on that sign. Right. Now you have a buyer. Now they don't buy in your farm, but you never would have had that buyer if it didn't come from your listing. Now sometimes they'll buy the listing they're looking at. Sometimes that buyer buys something else and then refers your sister. To you. Yeah. Now you have three leads from the farm. Got so, it. And then I get stuff from my farm. Like I just got a somebody that is like about five miles away from my farm. And it's their daughter who's going, you know, through changes in her life and getting rid of her house. But the mother referred me. Oh, this lady's good. She sells in our area. Right. Just, there's another listing that's not in my farm, but it came from my farm. The strongest thing you can do to get business is referrals in your farm. Internet, it's like I do a lot of internet, like some of my postcards. I've got liquidprices.com where they can sign up for the value of their home. And so, again, you're getting all of their information. And then you get um, – I use Top Producer Market Snapshot, so it will send them a market snapshot of the area. But – You've got that information, and sometimes those people are interested in selling. I've got those internet leads, which are stronger than stuff that a lot of times will come from Zillow or Trulia. Those buyers, they may not be ready to buy for 18 months. You still have to have something in place for them, but sometimes they're not buyers at all. Sometimes they're losing their house to foreclosure, and they're just looking on the internet. Right. You know, they're, they're, they're not going to be a buyer for seven or eight years. 
So your internet leads are a lot weaker than leads that you're gener generating yourself through your farming efforts and your referral efforts. Right. All, all, not all leads are created equal. I agree. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about this. And for everybody out there in the audience, um, we've been talking about these home valuation sites for a little while. And uh, Allison says lakewoodprices.com. I'm checking it out right now. Go, go take a look at it. And we're going to dig into how she built this and, and uh, all that stuff. But I want to, if you don't mind, Allison, I'd like to go back to the whole turkey thing for one second. I just want to ask you a question. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. You are... What about, have you went to a butcher, right? Or a smaller, not, you can't go to like Vons or Albertsons, which here are the big giant, you know, grocery stores. But what about, you know, you're sending out these postcards, these mailers, you know, what, have you ever offered to say, Hey, listen, I will co-brand my, my newsletter, or I will give you branding F fundamentally, you know, give them advertising on your newsletter or postcard. And in a, and for that, right, they, they split the cost of, you know, they give you the turkeys for free or they give you a, a steep discount or, I mean, have you ever tried, have you done anything like that? No, what I have done is local coupons with business only because coupons have holding power. So they're going to hold on to that coupon, which has your name on it. So the postcard might have it just listed on one side. On the other side, it's information about me. And then a quarter of the card will be a coupon for like the local cupcake store, buy two, get two free. Or buy one dinner at the local Mexican restaurant, get another dinner free. And right. a lot of the people are going to hang on to that postcard for when they go to that restaurant or cupcake place, which means your name is in that house a lot longer. Right. Right. I love that. I, I love that idea. You know, buy one, buy a taco and get one free kind of a thing. Um, all right. So Lakewood prices. Um, how did you build this? And, or who did you pay to be? I mean, it's, it's, it's beautiful. You know, you have to, you're Jack, you know, you have your IDX feed, you know, feeding into this. I, you know, g can you talk to us a little bit about how you built it and the cost of this thing? I just had a, um, one of the companies do it. You, you learn really fast. Like your first year when you don't have a lot of business, you can build yourself a landing page. You know, there's, you can use websites that are cheaper to design something basic for yourself. After you get a little business, you don't want to be focusing on, you want to focus a little bit on your marketing, like your YouTube channel. You want to really make sure that's developed. But things like landing pages, hand it over to somebody that's good at doing that stuff. So one, you know it works. And two, right. <laughs> something like that could have taken me a couple of days to build. At the least. company can do it for me. I go out and get another buyer. I go out and get another seller. That's my job. My job is to generate the leads and service those leads. I, I, My money needs to go buy the advertising. Right, right, right. I, I agree. Uh, how much did that cost you, if you don't mind us finding out? I think it was, um, I think it's a prime seller lead site. So if you go to prime seller leads, I've had it for quite a while. Okay. So their pricing is probably, I'm not sure what their pricing I'll is now. Yeah, we'll, we'll look at it. But okay. obviously, since I've had it a while, it's working. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they'll, they'll set up pages for you, and you can do, you know, advertising with those pages and draw people into there. Say that again. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. So yeah, so so you will do pay per click advertising or Facebook ads right. to drive right. traffic. Okay. Pay per click, Facebook ads. <clears throat> it goes right on the postcards. Like even though my website is superbroker.com, there's nothing that says find out the value of your home, liquidprices.com. That's going to draw people in because it's specifically about where they live. So I try to do. I probably own about a hundred different domains okay. of what I think people could use. Cause you know, it's seven, $8 a year. If you buy them from like GoDaddy. Yeah. So, so it, what do you do with those? So you, you have a hundred domains. I'll use them. Right. Like win a pie, win a pie.com. So when somebody sees that on the postcard, it's a contest to win a pie, but they go to win a pie.com. And it's all about basic good marketing and people like cutesy stuff like that. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. I got it. Okay. That's good. Um, so you mentioned earlier, you said, Hey, you know, focus on your YouTube channel. I went to your YouTube. I, you know, I mean, video is something that I, I push a lot here on the show. You know, I, I think having, um, you know, YouTube I think is it's becoming more and more important as we, you know, as the younger group gets on those computers to look for a home. Right. They want to see pictures. They want to see walkthroughs. They want to see as much information as possible before they even call that realtor. Right. I, I agree. I mean, I mean, I think uh, you know. I mean, uh, NAR just put out a report that uh, you know the average age of a of the um, uh, a real estate agent today is fifty seven, and the average age of buyers thirty four. I mean, those two groups communicate completely separately. Uh, now, those, those those Gen Y, those millennials, you know, they they don't have TVs that they watch YouTube. Uh, you know, I mean, that's where they go and search for information. Um, so I, I and on you and you, I think you, it seems like you just picked this up again. I see videos from a year ago and then I I've see videos from three two weeks ago. Video. I've got, I've actually got um, my actual YouTube is the Lakewood Mutual one. So if you Google Allison Danwick, there's two of them. There's one that we started, RE Superbroker, we started a while ago. Then we started one that's kind of Lakewood which has always been up. Got it. So I've okay. got actual two you channels, but because of the way YouTube is, you can't really combine them. Right. But the other one, you'll see it goes back all the way. But the reason you're only seeing the two weeks is because we just, we realized that you really have to, like, I don't know how many of, their, of you just Google your name. We Google my name continuously to see, okay, wh where are we? So we noticed that the old YouTube channel it's always coming up before the new YouTube channel, which has only been around for like two years. So it's like, how do we fix this? The only way we can fix it is to download some of the, the YouTube videos we have on the new one to the old one and keep both current. Got it. Because we don't want to lose those rankings, obviously. Right, right, right. Um, um, and, you know, I also, in, in, in doing a little research on you, uh, so SlideShare or, you know, SlideShare is a place where if you have slides, you're, you know, if you have presentations, people will upload, you can share your presentations on SlideShare. Somehow on SlideShare, you got, you have a video. I don't know how you put a video on there and why SlideShare is letting you even do that. Are you aware of that? I, uh, I well, you, I use, I use Animoto as well. Yeah. So you can put videos in there. Okay. I, 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 that's, for, that's news to me. If you okay. have the pro membership, you can add longer videos too. Got it. Okay. Um, so, so in what, uh, for the web lead, so you have, so obviously you said 60% of your business is from your farm. Um, walk me through those percentages. You didn't finish them up. So referrals is how much? Referrals is about 20 Okay. And the internet is the other 20. It's the other 20. Um, obviously. Right. So you've got 60, 20, 20. <clears throat> so the biggest, the, the, your biggest bucket, which is farming. Um, well, oh, let me back up. So referrals, that middle one, that 20%, those are your highest quality leads. The, earlier you said the best lead you can have is a referral from your farm. Or from a friend. Yeah. Or from a friend. Okay. Um, the the 20% of the web leads how how much quality are those i mean because you because you you made a difference you said you know the zillow leads that you get are not going to be that super you know great quality as opposed to the ones that that you generate yourself well the ones you're generating yourself are again from your farm where people have seen your stuff before so they're reaching out so maybe they want to sell more than somebody that's reaching out on Zillow, say, who might just want a market analysis just because they're going to refi. Okay. Um, there's no connection. When I call, if you come in through Zillow, you have no idea who Allison is. Right. Okay. You're 20 minutes away. You're thinking about Long Beach Lakewood and you're like, oh, I'd like to live in Long Beach and Lakewood. You've been on Zillow or Trulia, Realtor.com. Five or six agents are going to call you. Right. How do I make myself stand out more than the other agents? It's you have to you have to think of a plan to make yourself stand out. Number one, but two, that is the difference. The internet lead does not know you 
as much as your farm lead knows you. Right. When the farm lead sees me on the internet, they're like, oh yeah, she, she's, she's all around our neighborhood. It's a different connection. They already feel like they know me. They don't know me on Zillow. You know, it's, it's amazing. So, so I have, I interviewed a guy, um, uh, we actually kind of made friends, uh, Richard Shulman, he's in LA. This guy does about 50 million, 56 million, uh, a year in volume. So he's, he's doing all right for himself. And, uh, but he, all, all he does is buy leads. And uh, I actually had him on the show. I haven't released it yet. Uh, we, and we talked about how he does it. But somehow this guy, I mean, I can totally understand, you know, nobody knows you, you know, that you're just this person who got my lead. Um, and how, I mean, how are some people making it work and other people are not making it work? From like Zillow leads, for example. Uh, well, every, you know, there's statistics and it's like, it's like two to three calls, five to six calls. And it, basically drops off only between your one and three calls. It's only like 20% of the buyers will respond. Now, when you get to 11 calls, 80% of the buyers. So part of that is calling them multiple times. Got it. But you got to be careful too with your numbers. You know, it's like sometimes we see huge teams. Okay. And it's like such and such team sold 200 properties. And I'm like, well, that's great. But then you find out that they have 20 people on their team. Right. And it's like, are we in it for the numbers or are we in it to make money? And it's like, you can make leads work for you. You can go out and you can buy $100,000 worth of leads and they will work. But you're spending that 100000 so you have to decide and see every place is different. Maybe where there's in the Midwest where there's snow, maybe buying leads is going to be better than farming because obviously right. you can't get out there and farm in the snow. Yeah, upstate You're New York. You're going to have to mail. Yeah. So it's more expensive to mail. So maybe buying leads isn't such a bad idea. Right. Okay. It's all geographical and what, what works best for you. And I do buy some leads, but I'm not going to buy... I'm not, once you write that business plan and then the end of the year you look at it and you say, okay, I spent 20000 here and it generated $5,000 for me. I spent 20000 over here and it generated 50000 Where are you going to spend your 20000 the year after? Right. You're going to take it away from that other and you're going to spend forty to generate 100 Yep. I agree. So, so and into, that's the, the joy of doing a business plan and running those numbers at the end of the year. Let me break in here with a message from our sponsor. Our sponsor, Discover Publications, will create a customized, branded, 12-page newspaper that will be sent out to your farm and sphere. Now, this paper is cheaper than you think. For slightly more than the cost of a stamp, you can start sending out curated content and always stay top of mind. Never lose a deal again because that prospect just happened to forget that you were in real estate or misplaced your number. Go check them out at discoverpubs.com. And that so, and again, you started this this interview off with that, right? You said, "Hey, you know, people are the, 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 they are failing in, in creating their business, a real estate business, as a business. What other things? So people are not doing a business plan, Allison. Um, people are not running their business like a business. What what is another big hurdle that that new agents, you know, or aspiring agents? Maybe you've even done it for three or four years, but you just haven't broken through, you know, what is one other hurdle that, that, that they just need to be able to see the light and, and if they change it, right, their business will change. Lack of education, I guess, in all aspects of negotiating to contract writing to, if your office is offering those classes, if your board is offering those classes, go to those, go to them. And it's like, don't join an office because it's like, oh, here I only spend a hundred dollars for every transaction, and at this office they want twenty five thousand. Right. Because zero, if you make zero, it doesn't matter if you're paying a hundred dollars per transaction. But if you make fifty and you have to pay twenty five, well, at least you made twenty five and you're getting an education. It's important. It's so important to set the right foundation. I am so tired of agents calling me and saying, 
yeah, how do I show this property and does it have a pool? That's in the MLS. <laughs> it shows you. You go to the MLS, and I must get two or three calls a week at least. Oh, my god! You gosh. go to the MLS. It tells you, hey, there's a Supra on the front door, or call the owner, call me. Here's a phone number. It tells you whether the house has a pool or not. That is a stupid question, and when I hear those stupid questions, I hit delete because I have enough calls to return, and it's like, if I start the transaction out and you're already asking me, how do you show the home and does it have a pool, when that information is right in front of you. Oh, man. That's a problem. How is it going to be if we accepted your offer? Right. How is it going to be to work with you in, in week three or week four? You, you know, you, you won't even be able to get the deal through. Right. Yeah, and it's I, like educating yourself, looking at the MLS, having the technology to work with. The other calls I get is, hi, we're passing your home on Deerford right now. Um, how much is it and is it available? It's like, okay, if you have a smartphone or an iPad in the car with you, the MLS is right there available to you. Right. There is a program called MLS Touch that you can get for $9 a month that basically you touch it on your phone. It opens a map up. You touch the property that you're in front of because it reads the GPS. And it basically tells you price of the home, how to show the home. It, it's the MLS, but in a format that you just touch your phone when you're in front of the house. Touch your phone and in front of like, the house. Is there any... That is going to make you such a better agent because when you're passing that house and the client says, oh, what about this one? takes you literally 40 seconds to pull it up on your phone and give them the information. Right. And then you see, you know, it sits on the phone. This one's vacant lockbox. Let's go see it. You're right in front of the property. Think how much time you're saving. Stop I love it. being too cheap to buy the tools that are going to give you more time to sell more. Uh, I, I, I totally agree. I mean, I just, I, the, to me, what you're saying is super common sense and, and, uh, and I don't know how big of a problem that is for out there in the world. I mean, it's, I mean, you're bringing it up, so I'm sure it's real. What else, Allison? Let me let me just just. So you said uh, you started this segment off with, "Hey, go educate yourself." So you said, you know, get educated in in negotiation. Uh, you said, get educated in contracts, get educated in finance. I think you said, right. What what else are those things? Because I, you know, look, I'm writing them down because if 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 uh, this is, I will do topics in the future about this on the show. So I mean, can give me a couple more that you think are important for aspiring folks. Sure. When the client is in the car and says, "How much is my house payment?" You know, the title companies they all have a program that's free that you put right on your phone that you can put in price of home down payment, interest rate, and up pups the, prop, the, the payment. Got like, it. Within a second. Right. You said it earlier. Average age of the agent, 57. Average age of the buyer, 30. That 30-year-old, 30 they want you to text them. They want instant information because they can get it. How would you like to be in the car? And you can't tell them how much that house is, but they're already on their phone and they're telling you. <laughs> Yeah, totally. I yeah. That's going to be the agent that doesn't make the sale because the client wants you to know more than them. That's why you're working for them. Yeah. Right. If I you agree. you can't know more than them, you're not going to be working for them. Yeah. And, and, and knowing more is certainly all that, that sort of thing. Um, uh, but also, you know, knowing the inventory and again, like uh, th those younger folks, Gen Y, they're savvy, savvy people. They're used to, you know, they're always on and they, they're used to having information at their fingertips and they probably will know if there's a neighborhood or an area, if they want Lakewood, for example, you know, they, uh, for, uh, at the $400,000 price point. Um, that buyer probably knows all the houses that are out there. They just don't have the ability to, to you know, uh, they don't have a key to get in on them all and look at them. So, I mean, that's something that, right, the that right. agent should do. Right. <clears throat> you should be, so many times I get the buyers from other agents and their main complaint is all they did was tell, they said, oh, if you see anything you like, call me and let me show it to you. Right. Let me open the door. <laughs> right. And it's like, is that what you wanted to be? Did you want to be a door opener? Or did you actually want to hit the streets, find that house that fits their lifestyle and needs, and be the first in there to make an offer so they get a great deal? 
Um, That's where you differentiate yourself. And when you're sending them stuff, or they send you something and you say, oh, no, not that one. That one has no dining area, and you guys, you, see, you said you like to entertain. That's what's going to make the difference. Right. I agree. So so that person, so those people that are out there that are just blowing it, right? They don't read the MLS. They don't have the right tools to do their job because um, they're too cheap to pay the, you know, buy a tablet or whatever. Um, are they destined to just represent buyers because because here's here's my thinking right if you are not proactive enough to to buy the right tools uh, and to, to go out and educate yourself um you're probably never going to be great at a listing presentation so it seems to me like you're, you're not going to be great at a listing presentation but what's happening is you are falling behind with the buyers too because see if you don't have the tools for the buyers the buyers will just go on anybody they can drive by the homes themselves and it's like if you're not doing it for them during the day while they're working and they have to do it, then what's the difference between you and cut rate broker? Yeah. Or what are you doing for them? Right. You so have to add value. They're going to put yourself out of it. You're going to put yourself out of business. You never were in business. What's no, you had you got business cards and a license, right? You never were in business. No, you never were in business. Basically, you, you know, it's you're you're pretending, you're pretending, and it's like any agent. You know, people sometimes say, "Well, are you full time?" It's like it's almost laughable because it's you cannot not be full time if you're truly working your business. Right. You can't because yeah. it's just way too much to do, way too much. You know, look for you, Allison. I mean, I mean, you've been in at this game for twenty five years. <clears throat> now, this, this, and and we're it's it's interesting that we the the stuff that we're talking about today, the, this really basic first time stuff, almost never comes up on the show. Um, for you, right? I mean, there, there, in any business, you have ups and downs. Real estate is a, a it's a business of no's. It's a business of rejection. And sometimes there's days and weeks where you know you wake up and you you felt like you got kicked in the gut and you. You're not sure if you can do it all over again. I mean, for you, was there ever a time that you just thought you felt like it was just too hard and you felt like you were going to quit? And how did you push through that and, and get to where you're successful super broker today? Anything that's going to make you money is going to be hard. And you just have to push through and break the barrier. Number two is you need to act like you're already there. Mm. I think that's the biggest thing. And when I teach some of the other agents, it's like, are you really acting like you're there? Don't come to my class wearing jeans. Because that's not what is successful. If you get a listing call and you go to that home wearing jeans, you're going to get that listing? Yeah, no. Dress professionally, act professionally, educate yourself, read at least one book a month, act the part. If you, when I was new, I picked one successful agent in the office and I said, I'm going to watch what they do every single day. And that's what I did every single day until he's like, are you watching me? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> what are you doing today, Bill? And Bill's like, oh, today I'm making phone calls for two hours then I'm farming for an hour and I'm coming back to the office in the afternoon when it's cool. I'm going to make calls for two more hours. Then he was going to go preview property. I did what Bill did every single day. Bill's doing it. Bill's making money. Do not listen to the agents that say, oh, farming doesn't work and this doesn't work and I've tried that. Don't listen to them unless they have 30 or more sales on the board that year. If they have less than 30 sales for the year, why are you listening to them? Right. Don't even go there. Only listen to the agents that are making money. Right. 30, 30. And, and, and go, go ahead. Sorry. The, the biggest problem in our industry is all these new agents and they come in and they listen to all these agents and they think, oh, well, so-and-so said this. Well, so-and-so's never made any money. Why are you listening to them? They may have an opinion, but it doesn't mean anything because they don't do any business. Listen to the people that do the business. I got it. So, so you modeled Bill, um, uh, and you did exactly what Bill did. 
tell us about, I mean, do you still do the same stuff today? Tell us about what you did. What does that look like? Uh, you know, what does your ideal day look like? However you want to answer that. My ideal day is usually get up around 6.30 or 7. I'll put my walking clothes on. Five days a week, I actually go and farm. Okay, that means I'm just dropping at doorsteps. Now, sometimes I will, my farm's about 5,000, so sometimes I will hire help when I get really busy, but that is my fitness program. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. People are used to seeing Allison out walking in the morning because they're taking their kids to school, they're going to work, the old people are picking up their newspaper on the porch. It's the best way to run into people in the neighborhood. Usually, I'll get done about eight thirty, nine o'clock. Well, I'm sorry. When, when do you get? Home. When do you get? Oh, oh, at night. Okay. When do you? No, get, no, no. In the morning, I'm up from seven to eight thirty, nine in the morning farming. You're in your farm at seven in the morning. Yes. Oh my God! So you're what you what you're waking up like at five? No, my farm is right outside next your to door, my, next to my house. Got, outside, okay. So I'm getting my. I'm getting my track clothes on. Got it. Okay. And I'm hitting the streets with the postcards. Awesome. I'm going to do an hour and a half to two hours of farming, depending on what my day looks like. So I'm getting back home around 8.30 or 9, taking a shower, grabbing some breakfast. I'm usually at work by 9.30 or 10. Okay. Then I will see what my schedule looks like, prepare any listing presentations that I have, I usually do some calls, but, you know, just general file checking till about 12 or 1. Usually around 1 o'clock, I'll either eat lunch at the office or I go out for a quick bite. 2 o'clock to 4, I'll make some phone calls, follow up, um, send out CMAs, you know, just the market snapshots to people who may have, you know, general um, previewing property. And usually I'm done with that from about five. Now in summer, I'll either have a buyer to take out maybe from five to seven. Um, we also might have filmed a house during the day, prepare a YouTube video. I do have an assistant, so I've got help with my files and things like that. Um, you know, summer is perfect for door knocking. So Tuesdays and Thursdays are reserved for cold calling or door knocking, depending on what I feel like. And then Monday, Wednesday, I usually try to get home by about 5.30 or 6. Friday, about 5. And then I'll usually take a weekend off a month, and I usually take a Saturday or Sunday the rest of the time. You poor so, thing. That's too much work, Allison. It usually works out to about 45 hours a week. So it's not a huge amount of work. It's about 45. But I like work, you know, and it's like, that's okay. Well, I love so, I, yeah, I love that you that you see your farming as your fitness regimen. I think that's a I think that's a great idea. Um, and uh, you, you know what? It it it. First of all, it's like it keeps you. Everybody can walk. Most people. It keeps you in pretty good health. And it's a great way to start your morning. It's energized. I also have a Versa desk, which. Is a stand up desk. Yeah. So you can lower it to sit or you can raise it to stand. And when I'm making my calls, I usually have it raised up. And I've got the computer open to those phone calls that I have to make. And away I go. And sometimes when you're standing up, you feel a little bit more powerful. Totally. You know, there's a, there's a, I, I heard this one girl talk. Um, I, I actually, Mike Fair was on the show. And he came to town and I went to go see him, you know, because we chatted, you know, we spent an hour together, but I went to go see him in real life and, and uh, I met his wife. She said, hey, go in and see, go and see him do his thing. And he, he kind of highlighted this one lady and what she does, she's, she was actually from Spain. She cold, when she cold calls, she stands on top of her desk and she, and she stood on top of her desk because it made her feel, you know, more powerful or whatever. And by the way, I just stood up right now. Hey, I want to back up for a second. So we, we talked about you modeling Bill and we heard your ideal day, which is fantastic. But um, yeah, and you, you know, you got this is 25 years ago when you started modeling Bill. What do you know now, Allison, that you that you wish you would have kn- knew then? Well, 
what do I, I guess, um, I wish somebody had told me to set up individual accounts right away to treat my business as a business. You know, when you first start, you're kind of floundering and you just want that for sale and you need a little bit of money and you're struggling. Um, it just goes back to make that business plan, you know, have a business plan, have a farming plan of exactly what you're going to farm every single month. So you're ready for it. Once those postcards are ordered, they have to go out in three weeks. It doesn't matter. They're already sitting in the office. What, do you, what am I going to do? I have to pass them out. It's money already spent. Right. So it forces you to do it. And just technology is so important. You know, it's like I see the agents that have not kept up with it, and they're losing business as time goes on because they can't, they can't even, if you don't keep up with it gradually, Like if we go back five years and we had no knowledge of the technology from the past five years, think how hard and overwhelming it would be. Right. Yeah. It's like you have to be working on self-improvement all the time. So just like I told you, every now and then we'll Google my name, see what comes up. And it's like, oh, we need to tweak this. We need to tweak that. We're always changing something. Every week we have a project we're going to work on. So at the beginning of the month, I have lunch with my assistant that helps me and I say, okay, this is what we want to accomplish this month. So we have all the other work we want to do, but this month we want to get the YouTube videos changed over to the other one. We also next week want to tweak this on our super broker site so that we have instead of four properties showing, we have nine properties showing the week after that we have something that we're doing every single week. We're still weak in blogging. We, we need to blog more regularly. And it's like, there's, it's just, you don't have time to really, it's this tough. business is fun. This business is fun because not only do you have clients, you have great listings you can work on. When I go into a listing, it's like a home. It's like, oh my gosh, what's the best way to market this property? And it's, you're marketing yourself and you're marketing the the property. And one of the other mistakes I always see agents making is, well, that doesn't work, so I'm not buying it. Let's take the texting, for example. Okay, texting codes that go in front of the house. You know, it says text to blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, maybe they'll you'll get two or three texts a month. It's, I think, $19. So there's a lot of agents out there saying, oh, that doesn't work. Okay, but what if we thought about it from a reverse situation? What if we thought about it as not being a buyer's tool? There's so many things we buy as buyer's tools that really you can turn them into a strong listing tool. Like when I go to do that listing presentation and I sit there and tell the seller, hey, we have texting on our sign so that the buyer can sit in the car and get your home website right on their phone. Now, do I really care that I'm spending $19 a month and it isn't working? Right now. Yeah. Try to think of the things you're buying as not just buyer tools, but how could I turn this around and make it powerful in a listing presentation? I love it. Because there's a million tools out there that don't work as well as they should, but are great listing tools as well. Yeah, I got it. You know, I'll, I'll tell you, you with your farm being five thousand, you should you should do a little podcast. Uh, you know, it'd be cool to do a little podcast because I imagine you know people know Allison out there. You're walking around all the time. I'm sure you you've done stuff like you know organized block you know block yard sales or whatever. And uh, you know you're the kind of I do yard sales. I did a snow day. Snow Last day. Year I did a snow day, which was very successful. I had snow brought in because we don't have snow here in Long Beach and Lakewood. It never snows here. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It's L.A. for everybody. So, if you're uh, if you're in you know Peru, Long Beach is in Los Angeles, California. Exactly. <laughs> so we had a great snow day. I had about sixty tons of snow brought in by a local ice company, and they built some snowmen and a little play area. And we had four sled runs for the bigger kids, two sled runs for the slower kids. It was probably the event was about $8,500. Got it. But all you need is one listing in the area to cover it. Remember? Yep. Yep. 
And but everybody's kids were coming. We had food trucks. It was a nine to three. People in that area knew I gave that event. It was a wonderful event. It was great. That is, that I don't think fantastic. I do it every year, but it's like every two or three years, definitely. Right. Cool. I love it, Allison. Hey, listen, let's, I know we're, we're taking a bunch of your time. Let's wrap this up here. Um, and I usually just ask just a few questions at the end. Uh, question one is a book. So if you, if you know, again, I'm an aspiring agent out there. Uh, I have 25 bucks. What book should I go buy? Seventh level of communication. I like that one. Okay. Who wrote that again? Uh, it's not a Covey book, is it? No, 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 no. It's, um, shoot. I'll look You're it up. You're supposed to ask people that when they're... <laughs> <laughs> That's, I'll look it up. Don't worry about it. And, every, and Mayor, look, Stephen Mayer. I think it was Stephen Mayer. Got That's it. right. <clears throat> look, and if anybody wants a copy of this, go to... The, our link that we cut a deal with Audible and it's audibletrial.com slash Super Agents Live. Get a free copy. Oh, that's of this book. another thing. Audible. I listen to Audible's books on, I listen to books on Audible while I'm farming. Yeah. 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 You should, so, well, from now on, you're going to be listening to the podcast. So. Yes, I'll be listening show. to your podcast, right. of course. <laughs> so you, you, you are very, you're a very tech savvy agent. Do you have an internet tool uh, other than an Evernote? Because I'm sure you use Evernote that that you can share with the audience. I know, I love the, I love we your. Use, we use Dropbox all the time. Yeah, yeah, Dropbox. Love Dropbox. Google Drive. That's great. Um, Google Drive. Yeah, Dropbox is so much easier for us. And um, I even just gave, you know, my assistant has a laptop that just has all my sign ins on it. So she doesn't even have to go through and, you know, share the folder. She can just go right to my Dropbox, which is fantastic. Um, I think the strongest is the one the title company gives you to, to be able to tell somebody their net sheet right away. Net sheets, home payment, you know, Fidelity has one, Tycor Title has one, Chicago has one. They all have one. And I, lo I love your MLS Touch one. I'm going to go look that up, by the way. And then, the, and then my last question here. I also like... On the Androids, there is a, oh, you know what's really powerful? What? Mid Signals Hub. Never heard of that one. If you guys, yeah. If you use a Gmail, which most of us do now because it's really easy, you can add an add-on to your Chrome that's called Signals Hub. And what it does is it lets you, when you send an e like I could send you an email, and I can check the box that I want to know when you've opened it. It will notify me when you've opened it and what time you opened it. Interesting. And it does not even let you know. So when you guys send an offer over and you want to make sure the other agent got it, it's going to send you, hey, they opened this file at this time. I can then take a copy of that, send it to the agent, say, hey, I see you got my offer. I noticed you opened it at 340. Will you say that? Let me know. That's very spy-y, you know? Nobody says, hey, you know do, what? If there, there's low inventory here right now, but I just actually, I don't use it all the time. But like the other day, I sent a notice to perform. Here in California, if they're not performing, you can send a notice to perform. Once they have a receipt of delivery, it's 48 hours. So that is my receipt of delivery. Got it. Oh, the that's other good. thing it's good for is say you send out a market analysis to someone and you know, a lot of the customers don't respond. Yeah. Like, their internet leads. You don't even know if they got it. You don't even know if the internet address is valid, really. Yeah. I can see when they open that CMA. And how so will you use that? It, and that, well, if they open it one time, it's like, okay, they open the CMA. Right. If they open it five times. Got it. Okay. <laughs> That's someone that I feel is closer to selling their home than the person that only opened it once. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I look, I do the same thing. So I use MailChimp and, and for my guests, I will, I will send out emails on MailChimp and I can track the opens and, and uh, you know, the non opens. And uh, when I see somebody that has opened my email like 13 times, I know they're interested in coming on the show. The problem is, you know, I will look at that and I will not follow up with them. And, you know, look, if fortune's in the follow-up and I should follow up. I'm stupid for not following up. I know that I should, but I'm like, oh, you know what? And see, that's what your Tuesdays and Thursday nights are for. 
Okay, that's for the follow-up. You gotta have, you got a time block. You got a time block those Tuesdays and Thursday nights. The other thing I find works really well is call them three or four times for those internet leads and stop calling and text them two or three times. Mm, mix it up. Yeah. Mix it up. And then I use Spokio as well. Use, you, and that you finds a, about a third of the phone numbers. Wait, wait. You hit a button. So uh, tell, what's the name of that again? Spokio. Spokio. S-P-O-K-E-O. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you, you can, can find put numbers. in somebody's email address and it will tell you their name sometimes and their phone number. And once you have their name, you can find out what house they own from the tax records. Man, you are tricky, Allison. You're tricky. You're the tricky agent. That should be Allison Van Wig, the tricky. The you have to be the tricky agent because you want to get those home addresses so that you can say, "Hey, let me reach out to you." Here's a CMA. Right. I'm not saying you have to bug them. You just have to be there for them. Let them know, "Hey, Allison's out here when you're ready." Got it. Allison, I love it. Hey, we got to wrap this up. Thank you so much for coming on the show. You've you've delivered tons of actionable advice. I personally took a, a page full of notes and I hope everybody else uh, has the same or more. If anybody has missed any of this, go back all the stuff I put on the show notes. And I think I just realized not a, a lot of people, you, you just listen, but I have a show notes for every episode. So superagentslive.com. Allison Van Wig, go check it out. Allison, thanks so much. Let me know what you think of the uh, of the content once you start listening to this show, and uh, I look forward to maybe having you back on in in four or five months. All right, have a fantastic day. You too. See you, Allison. Bye. Let's go. Yeah.